Well, hi there. So in this video, we're going to do some practice with supply and demand. And for the most part, we're really just drawing graphs and seeing how they're affected by changes in supply and demand. So let's get started. Okay, so this first question actually says we've got three graphs that we're going to quickly draw here. It gives us some very important information at the beginning, and, and this is actually an old AP exam problem, so I think it's great practice for you. First, bread and butter are complements. That's going to tell us some information about the way that they shift in response to the change of price of one to the other. Government begins to subsidize wheat, so that's going to start to change, right? So we've got this thing, this thing, and wheat is an input to bread. And so that's a third relationship that we're kind of keeping track of here. The second thing is really not a relationship, it's just saying that this is the initial event. That's the initial change. For each of the following markets, wheat, bread, butter, draw a label uh, and then show the effect of the subsidy and the subsidy is on wheat. So first what we're gonna do is just kind of set up our graphs with price and quantity for each one. And so P, Q, P and Q, P and Q, and then we're gonna do supply and demand, right? And, and so really it's just good practice of drawing our supply and demand graphs. And then next part, we wanna label current price and current output as P star, Q star. It really will just kind of allow us to, to say maybe P1 and Q1 for our second values. And that will allow us to compare, like what happened when P star went to P1, did it go up or down? So the first thing is, is that there's a subsidy in, uh, what is it? wheat, right? So the government says every time you make a unit of wheat, a farmer, we are going to pay you, right? We're going to give you money, which reduces the cost of production and actually increases the supply. So we're going to have a rightward shift to the supply of wheat and therefore a increase in the quantity and a decrease in the price of wheat, which is really important. We have to make sure we know the decrease in the price of wheat is happening because it tells us right here, wheat is an input into making bread. And now it's cheaper to produce bread. And the reason why it's cheaper to produce bread is because the thing that goes into it, the input, right, the factor, um, the, the land factor of wheat, which grows, we would say is cheaper. And so there's now lower costs in the bread market. So there's a shift here as well. But this, it is important to recognize the government's not subsidizing directly the bread market, but indirectly, they're helping out all those bread, uh, those bread manufacturers, and it helps out bread consumers as well. So this subsidy for wheat makes it wheat, makes it cheaper to make bread. Um, now, the bread is getting cheaper, and it tells us in the first sentence, wheat, or sorry, bread and butter are complements. And remember, complements are two goods that are commonly consumed together. They complement each other, like, oh, what a nice shirt. No. And so if these are getting cheaper, it's cheaper to buy bread. The consumer at home is going to say, ah, oh, it's a little cheaper. I'm going to buy more of the thing that goes along with it. And in fact, you can even see there's more bread at a cheaper price. And so there will be more demand for butter. And again, that's because the demand for butter is dependent on the related good of bread. And you might be looking at it and going, wait a minute, but the price of butter went up. Yeah, because there was, no de there was more demand for it. So they, these kind of interrelated markets are useful to study because you had one little event of a subsidy in wheat and it actually caused more demand for butter. So that happens a lot in economics, right? You have unintended things that happen. Um, hopefully that one wasn't too bad. Number two, bananas are an input for muffins in the space at right, draw a market for muffins. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We have price and quantity, downward sloping demand, upward sloping supply. We're gonna do our Q star and our P star. And then it says, oh, oh shoot. It does say P zero and Q zero. Gloss, read the problem right there. So I'm going to change that to Q0P0 to make sure that I'm following the instructions. Then show the impact of an increase in the price of bananas, right? So bananas go up in price. Bananas are an input for muffin. So higher input costs are going to say, therefore, less supply, right? And so we're going to decrease the supply to S1, uh, the supply of muffins, that is to say. And that's going to reduce the quantity of muffins transacted and raise the price in the, in the muffin market. Uh, question number three in the space of right, graph for SUVs in equilibrium. And when it's saying that it's in equilibrium, it's saying that there's not a shortage or a surplus, right? And we're going we're gonna to kind of look at what those would look like later. Now, this one doesn't tell us how to label, so I am going to use P star, Q star. On your graph, show the effect of an equilibrium price in the market. For, if the price of gas, a complement good, goes up. So we would say that's going to be a demand shifter. And the price of gas going up, and it's a complement is going to lead to less demand for SUVs. So we'll shift that curve to the left, D sub one, 
uh, Q sub one, and then a lower price for SUVs. And we do find that's true, that in times where there's an extended period of high gas prices, um, SUV sales fall and fuel efficient um, cars have higher demand and vice versa, right? The United States has famously low gas all around the world compared to all around the world. Our gas is really cheap and, and we have way bigger, less fuel efficient cars as a consequence. Um, number four, in the space at right, draw correctly, correctly the graph market for cups of coffee. Okay, coffee, supply and demand, right? And then we're gonna do a quick little Q star, P star, get that. Effect of a decrease in the price of coffee beans, which are an input, right? And so if input costs, inputs costs go down, we would say supply is gonna increase. And so shift to the right. It's cheaper to produce the coffee. And so we would say more coffee is gonna get produced at a lower price. All right, now let's take a look at the multiple choice. Decrease in the demand for antique lanterns. That's very relevant for high school students. Thank you, College Board. This is AP question. A normal good would cause by which of the following. So what could cause demand to decrease? Uh, increase in their incomes? No, that would be more. Increase in the price? No, because that's going to be quantity demanded. Increase in the expected price. If I think that the, the price is going to go up soon, I'm going to buy today. No. Increase in the price of electric lanterns as substitute. So people would be buying more of our thing. No. Increase in the price of lamp oil, a complement. So it's more expensive to buy the fuel. So I'm not going to buy as many of the lanterns. And that's going to be the correct answer. E. If the supply of fish increases, there will be a, let's see, uh, increase in the demand for chicken, a substitute. No. Um, because you have a lower price for fish, right? Lower price for fish. Um, so that's not going to cause more demand for chicken, it would cause less. Increase in the demand for fish. No, price doesn't shift the curve. Just because the supply of something is changing doesn't mean the demand for it is going to change. You'll get a different quantity demanded, but not a different demand curve. Increase in the price of fish tacos. Um, no, because fish is cheaper. It would make the fish tacos cheaper. I assume that fish tacos have fish as an input. Decrease in the price of fish. If there's, yes, there, right there. That would have been way easier if I just read all the answers. Decrease in the price of fish. More supply. Suppose hot dogs and hamburgers are substitutes in consumption. Supply of hot dogs decreases. So what's going to happen to the market for hamburgers? If the supply of the dogs is decreasing, then the price of the hot dogs is going to rise. And I know that there's substitutes in consumption. So if the price of the hot dogs is rising, then I know that people are going to demand more hamburgers. So let me look for that. Supply, supply, demand for hamburgers, shift to the right. Boom, that's the right answer, C. And that's, again, because the price of the hot dogs is going up and they're substitute goods. Number four, what will shift supply of apples to the right? Um, income, no, that's demand. Price doesn't shift the curve. Wages, that's going to change supply. Increase in wages, that's going to make it more expensive to produce. So it's actually going to decrease the supply. So three or C is not right. Decrease in the rent rate for harvesting equipment. So it's cheaper to rent the equipment. So our inputs are getting cheaper. So that would actually increase the supply, D. And again, remember, just right is an increase. That, that's a way to kind of keeping that track. Five, supply curve for automobiles will shift to the left. So a decrease in the supply of autos could be caused by what? More efficient robots. No, that's going to increase it increase in wages in the industry. That would cause it because that's going to make it more expensive to produce, right? So we're going to put B here. That higher wages in the industry will decrease the supply in a, in a mathematical sense just because it's increasing the cost of production. And then I can, I can skip the rest. Number six, which of the following would lead to an increase in the price of peaches? So two things could cause the price of peaches to rise. You know, maybe there's more demand for it, but maybe there could be less supply. Let's test these out. Wage paid to peach farm workers rises. So that would cause the supply to decrease at the same time that medical researchers find that eating peaches is good for you. Demand increases with that part. If these are two happening at the same time, the supply less is going to cause the price to go up. The demand higher, that's going to cause the price to go up. So actually, A is our correct answer. B, let me take a look at the wrong answers really quick here. While the wages fall, no, that's that's not right because that's going to make more supply and that would cause the price to go down, right? So we're kind of looking for what would cause the price to rise. Peach industry launches successful ad campaign. So the demand part would, but not the first part, right? So that's why I'm ruling out that question. C, breakthrough in technology, more peaches. That's again the problem because we're actually looking for something that would decrease the supply. Prices of apples and oranges fall. Um, that that's I, it doesn't tell us that they're substitutes, right? So I can't really go anywhere with that. Weather is a ideal. That's gonna that's gonna be the opposite as well. So A. 
Number seven, cotton used to produce towels. An increase in the price of cotton will do what in the towel market? And so if there's higher input costs, right? Higher input costs is going to lower the supply of towels. And so I'm going to look for that. Decrease in demand? No. Decrease in demand? No. Decrease in supply? Here we go. Leads to a shortage of towels. That would be true. Followed by upward pressure on the price. And, and so what's really happening is we're saying we went from a scenario like this with supply and demand to way less supply, right? And temporarily, that's going to cause kind of a little shortage, actually, right, where, where people are wanting to buy. And so that's going to cause the price to get pushed back up to the new equilibrium um, at the higher price. So C is going to be our correct answer for this one, right? That's why the price is rising is because there's this like little temporary disequilibrium in the market as we go from S to S1. Eight, an increase in the supply of coffee could be caused by um, decrease in cream. No, that's not going to change supply. Um, decrease in the cost of labor to produce it. That, that could increase the supply, right? That's a factor used to produce the thing. Number nine, a decrease in the supply of oranges raised the price of oranges in the market. That's, that's expected. Substitution effect of the price increase. So this is saying, what's it going to kind of cause consumers? What are they going to do? Well, they're going to substitute out something else for these more expensive apples. And so they're going to purchase more of something else. In this case, um, let's say increase the quantity of other fruits demanded and decrease the quantity of oranges demanded. So that is true, right? It's not changing the demand for oranges. It's just moving to a different point on these lines. And so it's really just saying we went from here to here. And so we have a decrease in the quantity demanded because demand didn't change of oranges and people are going to substitute out other fruit. Number 10, the table above lists monthly individual stuff for buyers in the market, which represents a price and quantity on the market demand curve. And, and this may seem initially a little bit weird, but we're really just adding these together. And so I'm going to start at the bottom and work my up 20 cents and 40. That doesn't work. Um, because it says 20 and zero, 16 cents. And what is this? Uh, 220, 270. So 270. And that is the correct answer. So 16 cents and 270 is the right answer for this last one. So hopefully this helped you make sense a little bit more of supply and demand. I'll see you next time.